Okay, let's write an adventure. It's Friday, I'm having a game tomorrow on Saturday, and hopefully this video will go online Monday or Tuesday. I'm finally going to play some Bloodsun, printed out the beta rules, and uh, very motivated to play again after a long break because of the shutdown. This episode could also be called How to Write an Adventure in Your Own Setting. But the process should not be too different from any other setting. Yesterday I wrote this um, Bloodzone random adventure hook tables. So I got 20 starting points, main conflicts, locations, locals, rewards, unexpected twists, and to make an antagonist I have 20, 20 times 20 more tables. And the process is I uh, already 20. Let's see what it is. Uh, it's a 20. A black goit speaking to a great old one. That's an interesting start. Main conflict. Seven. PCs are part of a plundering warband. Location. Underwater ship graveyard. That doesn't fit together very well. For now, we are just gathering some ideas. The locals. Ten. Expedition of a merchant house. The reward. 13. Mind crushing secrets of Eldritch lore. Yeah, that fits well in the theme. Unexpected twist. This is going to be a one-shot, so I'm not sure if I will actually have time for that. But I will um, prepare it in a way, if they get to the end and there is time left, I can introduce the unexpected twist to get like two hours more play in. And if we are running out of time, I just don't introduce the unexpected twist. So let's see. Number two. The PCs are actually the bad guys. Yeah, I can work with that. So, we have start in a black void, speaking to a great old one. PCs are part of a plundering warband. Its setting is an underwater ship graveyard. It's the expedition of a merchant house. And the reward is mind crushing secrets of Eldritch lore. So the start and the reward already fit together perfectly. And uh, the big reveal that the PCs are actually the bad guys fits in there as well. Can work with the underwater ship graveyard and the merchant house, like it can be an expedition to the underwater ship graveyard. Maybe the PCs are part of that, but they also get influenced by the great old one that once them to do something contradictory to the expedition's goals. What's not fitting here is that the PCs are part of a plundering warband. That won't work very well. 
So let's see what we have instead for the main conflict. PCs have been blackmailed to get an ancient artifact. Not be bad. I know that one of my PCs is uh, an earth elementalist, the other is a uh, mercenary gunslinger. So I think they uh, have actually been hired as mercenaries. See these random tables are just to get inspiration, you uh, don't have to slavishly follow what you roll up in here. So the PCs are hired as scards, or let's say extras, by Merchant House ex Expedition. Okay, let's see. Let's start a new table. And roll up my antagonist. This is uh, done like character creation in Cypher system. So you roll adjective, noun and object. Let's start. Seven. So the antagonist. Say cursed. Ten. Cursed Scoundrel. Five. Was stuck in his ways. I don't really like this combination. I like Cursed. Let's reroll the last one. Nine. Searches for Eldritch Truth. Yeah, that fits very well in the into the theme of the adventure. So he will probably search for the same mind-crushing Eldritch secret as uh, the PCs will. And uh, they get in conflicts whoever reaches it first. And uh, this antagonist will be very motivated because he's cursed. He's probably looking for a way to break the curse or maybe the curse compels him. this listing and write a summary PCs been hired by a merchant house now I put this into context with my setting and this will uh, either go out of uh, Port Ungol or Flotsam which are both like um, port towns, harbor towns. Uh, and if it's a merchant house, uh, the merchant house of Ungol would be a good pick it's the most powerful in the eastern wastes. They have their own port. They would be capable of founding an expedition to an underwater ship graveyard. This will be interesting. So, PCs have been fired by House Ungol to work as bendable assets during an expedition to an underwater ship grave graveyard leaving 
coming from Port Ungal. Um, the start of the adventure will be in the black void, but like the starting condition is with the adventure already in progress. At the start of the adventure, comma, the uh, expedition is already at anchor above their uh, target. PCs are contacted by a great old one. Now, um, I don't really need a name for the great old one at this point. He will probably not introduce himself in any meaningful way. But uh, a theme would be good. Uh, we are in danger of being very very close to Cthulhu and running an underwater adventure with a great old one. But uh, it's a bit of a pulpy adventure. So uh, why not? Uh, maybe make him a bit more like an Aboleth, like a Leviathan. Like a freaking huge space whale that has the old one has the aspects of a great black whale. It's not a white whale, this one's black. <laughs> Twenty percent cooler. A white whale would also be interesting. So what does the great whale wants? Something that gets them into conflict with the expedition as a whole. And the reward will be mind crushing secrets of Eldritch lore. Well, and the great old one wants them to find an ancient Artifact Throw it into the deep sea Same artifact comma the expedition the antagonist I'm searching for Yeah that that sounds interesting. So, uh, need some NPCs. So, certainly an expedition leader. Uh, something like Ship captain, um, quartermaster might be important, and a dive leader, the leader of the divers. And of course, I need my antagonists. That could be one of the first three. It's not like it's going to be a super long adventure. I don't want it to be the expedition leader. 
Uh, he will be... I think it's more interesting if this is like a three-way... Um, conflict between uh, the PCs, the expedition, and the antagonist. So let's make the dive leader the antagonist, because he will be in closest proximity to the PCs and the target. He will be down there as well. Maybe another diver. Not the dive leader, he's got a bit too much uh, power of leadership. I think the theme of the scoundrel would work well. Antagonist. The theme of the scoundrel will work well if he has snuck in there under the nose of the merchant cartel and uh, has to use subterfuge and deception to get his will. Another dialogue. He's a cursed scoundrel in search of Eldritch Truth. Um, now I need a name generator. Don't really have to overthink this. Oh, this is a huge selection. Assyrian names, why not? I like this Gumri Isle. Here, I need uh, appearance. Behavior might be good. Motivation. This is important. Finally, stats. Stats are, in, in my book, the least important part. I can always come up with difficulties for the players to roll against on the fly. But I need a name. I'm not very good at improvising a name. I need an appearance, or he will just look very generic. And I need the motivation so I know what the character will be doing and why. And behavior is a good hint how to roleplay this NPC. And this I need for all of the important NPCs. Dive leader gets it, quartermaster gets it, ship captain, and the expedition leader. And I don't need to roll anymore. I also want a list of more names. This comes in very handy, so let's get a few more of these. Oh. Clear formatting. Get some female names.
So something uh, different. Maybe some Scottish names to go in there. Slavic names. Yeah, this would be interesting. I've not really decided on a theme for for like the names of the people in the Eastern Ways. And I don't think there really should be one. It's like a mixture, an amalgamation of many different cultures that have come there over the centuries to search for artifacts and scraps. Um, there will be some natives, but uh, they might be the minority by now. So uh, names and language will be all over the place. Don't think I need quite that many names, that kind. So I only take a few of these as well. Get a few dwarven names in here. Death names. Interesting. And what I will do, I will put huge line spacing in here, so I can just write something about these NPCs onto the page. And let's give a page break here. And then anytime I need uh, an NPC can just take this page, pick a random name, uh, describe some NPCs and then write down here what it is. Um, some crew member, some member of the merchant house, some random tavern uh, patron they meet on the way. And if that NPCs reappear, I can look at this list and it will be right there. It's a great way to get more NPCs on the fly. Let's make this a bit bigger. So I have more space in between. I only want one. One page of this. One is plenty. House Ungol, in my mind, is an uh, influential Dwarven merchant house. Well, the expedition leader could be a uh, Dwarven female of said house. She'd be an Ungol. Uh, Kelsia Ungol. Let's give her a nickname. Like, um. Iron Hands. You don't get to be an expedition leader if you are. super young and unexperienced, so. I mean. 
possible if she were some kind of um, savant for this kind of expeditions. But I think she's more like a middle-aged, middle-aged drowned woman. Dwarves in my world get more and more draconic aspects as they age, their hair color changes, skin color changes, they begin to grow scales and at around a hundred years they start growing horns. So if she's uh, middle aged, she probably has, let's give her short brown hair, brownish skin, with scales growing in places, would grow in places where you would normally grow uh, calluses, I guess. Maybe it starts uh, on the outside, on the shoulders, on the legs, on the knees. Imagine she has like very thick, strong arms, hard eyes. And she wears some. Um, Say practical but expensive clothing. Behavior never jokes, never smiles. Cruel Iron Heart Mistress. That will not endear her to the players. Her motivation is, of course, to make the expedition success. Hired crew is expendable. Don't need stats right now. It will roll something up off camera. Ship captain. Uh, let's make him the complete opposite from the expedition leader. So I need uh, Thundorian, I think. See if they have cat folk names in here. Yeah, I actually do. <laughs> Great. Well, he's a Masaki, and let's give him a. Last name, family name as so. well. Masaki. Shasso. Sas. No one can speak that. Um. He appears too young to be a ship captain. 
uh, lithe orange. Oh, uh, you know what? My uh, friend, where we'll be playing as, he has a cat. Really uh, small, cute one. And I think I'll make this ship captain look exactly like the cat. So, small, lithe, white, comma, brown, dark, brown, speckled fur. We are simple yet. Um, how do you say? Uh, I'll let my German show here. Simply at show it closing, but Uh, he gets the behavior from the cat, so he's playful, um, brave on the edge of stupidity, stupid brave. And uh, he's a big show off. Fun wants to live a life fun of adventure. Sure. And cuddles. <laughs> Cause it's the cat of my friend. Once again, I don't need stats at the moment. Master could be really anything, really. Another dwarf, maybe, might be a part of the expedition. How about the quartermaster is actually an old goblin slave? See, do we have goblin names here? I don't like these goblin names at all. Yagris. I can work with that. Grey heart. Bearded. Uh, 
clean, simple clothing. Speckles because he's old. He needs to read. And a good quality iron slave collar. And he's like the model goblin slave. He wants to freeze his masters so he does not get ripped and instead gets benefits. Let's give them another secret motivation the players m maybe can exploit. Uh, make him a drug addict. And don't have that many drugs. Uh, let's call it Dream Snuff. Snuff Stream. Snuff Stream Snuff. again don't need stats at the moment. The dive leader I imagine that would be a male dwarf who will sink like a brick when he hits water. That's a great name. Um, let's, but let's make it horn chest instead of honor chest. Sroholic horn chest. Appearance. Male dwarf. Short black hair, sharp green eyes, built like a brick. Where's greasy? Typical dwarf. Um, I don't think dwarves actually would like being in this business too much. So um, let's say he's in for it for the money. So another diver. Thandorians are also are actually supposed to be the most numerous race on the planet. Uh, followed by goblins probably. Goblins might overtake them at some points because goblins breed very fast. But I have no humans so far. Um, he's cursed. Let's make him a middle 
aged human man. Wish. And leathery skin. That's not leathery at all. Leather. Leather. Humans are the biggest and strongest race in my setting. They are the half orcs of my setting actually. So you'll be tall, wide shoulders, thick arms. But he's cursed somehow and that might show in his physical appearance. Let's say he's always sweating. Let's uh, make him bold, always sweating. Uh, he's a scoundrel and he needs to play everyone against each other so he's uh, probably really helpful and friendly to everyone. And he needs the artifact. Break his curse. Once again, don't need the stats right now. Don't need the more NPC names. Um, I need my location the underwater ship graveyard. I think I'll uh, make a map. Okay, let's make some maps. I find drawing maps is always a very inspirational creative process and I get lots of ideas for my scenarios when I'm drawing the maps. Uh, what I want to do with this scenario is, eventually, I want to put it in a very compact form, like this Murkborg adventure. That is just a pamphlet, so it fits on two A4 pages. So eventually I'll have to compress these maps down a lot. I imagine I start with the uh, underwater ship graveyard. And I probably want at least three objects of interest in here. So let's put like the wreck of some half sunken and half destroyed kind of sail ship in here and let's call it uh, the galleon. And I want that my players have a bit of room to explore before they find the right shipwreck that will lead them into the final dungeon. Um, 
and the galleon would be a prime target like a big freight ship maybe i even put some treasure in there oh, so i probably do like a small d4 table one two Uh, what they can find in like uh, one unit of time in uh, in a search. Um, this will be like uh, they won't have proper diving equipment. Uh, probably a diving bell, maybe like primitive diving suit with a pump back at the ship. And not uh, modern scuba diving equipment and anything. And I don't think they have any option to breathe underwater. Not that I know of. Maybe I put uh, some very limited option in there. Like they get one potion of water breathing. Uh, so they should use that when they know they're going to need it. Six finds uh, M force of antique wine. Why not? Handful of golden coins. That's a nice find. And uh, something that's a big more out there, like a uh, totem to a strange god. Uh, and since I decided to put the Leviathan, it's a great old one in here, totem to a Leviathan. And uh, number four, there uh, should be one find they do not want to get. Um, maybe on second thought it will be uh, useful but should be dangerous when they find it like a uh, skeleton wielding a magic scimitar if they defeat it they get the scimitar that could be useful that's also a bit plain uh, maybe a Hermit crab, not make it a giant hermit crab. Crab and a treasure chest. And then put something really nice in that treasure chest, like a golden compass. That could be a nice trinket. What, what would be transported in treasure chests? Certainly treasures, jewels, gold. I'll think of something later. Let's put another ship over here, something a bit more modern in design. A bit more local. Maybe it's like lying on its side. Uh, 
let's make it a steamship. Why not? The steamship. Like, uh, getting this back onto the surface, scavenging the metal alone from this would make the expedition worthwhile, because metal is so very precious on Thandor. So the expedition leader might want to focus on this wreck, uh, maybe diving at it for days, giving the players opportunity to look what they are after. Okay, again, D4 finds. One, two, three, four. All toolbox. It would be useful. Even if they are rusty tools, you can uh, clean them up. Steel tools, very good. I know that one of my players wants to play a gunslinger, but I won't let him start out with a good gun. Certainly not. He will get one or two single shot pistols, I guess. So uh, let's put a rusty six shooter in here. If he can get that, that would be a great treasure for him. Um, something that a sailor could have with him, like a... a silver flask. The fourth one, again, dangerous at first, but if they get it, um should be useful. So maybe it's a uh, safe room. Safe room and uh, there will be passengers' possessions or something in there. Maybe containing um, all of the ship's uh, money. The war chest. Maybe that was a mercenary warship. Oh, let's make it a bit more special. Ah, uh, how about religious artifacts? would be very precious, not necessarily useful. It closes when behind them, closes when they enter. And uh, the final ship will get a map of its own. That will be like my dungeon entrance. So uh, it should be the least assuming of the three 
on a surface level. That that does not look like. There's just an old, broken smokestack. And that, of course, will be something like the tower of a submarine. And once they get in there, they find the actual dungeon. So there will uh, probably be closed airlock that they'll have to break into. And they probably need very heavy equipment and a bit of time to do it. Maybe there's a guardian here. So I have a closed rust shot airlock. And let's say uh, an electric eel made its home there and make it a dire electric eel. Or well, let's call it a dragon electric <laughs> electric dragon eel. How about that? An electric dragon eel made its home here dungeon entrance trans to to the lost ship okay uh, i've got some more room on here Let's say D6 encounters. Um, every time they uh, just dive around for too long, something might happen. So first, nothing. Uh, the air hose uh, gets stuck, gets blocked. Three sharks. Four. Um, Fire jellyfish. Five uh, playful it won't be quite an orca, but like playful playful six meter. Whale. And if they roll a th six, they should be. Yeah, yeah, six. That's very high. What do we get? And I'm like, uh, something very terrible happens. So, what is it you really don't want to encounter? Giant squid would be the obvious choice. <laughs> yeah, it's very uh, thematic. Giant squid. Maybe a dragon turtle. Oh, that would be fun. A dragon turtle uh, just happens to swim by. Like, 24 meter dragon turtle. <laughs> 
Have fun with that. Still got some room over here. So uh, I could put a fourth boat in here. So let's go with an even older design. And I can only like see the rough outlines where the ship used to be so completely like covered in sand this should be like a roman galeri it's not the current word I have no idea. Again, D four finds. First ancient bronze sword. Let's make it a kopesh. Slightly more interesting. Still sharp, why not? These six pearls. The crown of a king. Why not? And number four. If I redo that for the pamphlet, I'll redo the world map, that's for sure. But it will serve for tomorrow. My players are not going to see this. And four, once again should be dangerous yet rewarding i haven't had undead sailors anywhere so far so maybe i put them here um <laughs> let's have a little fun with it like uh it's a amalgamation of skeletons undead screw crew golem the online crew all is one and if they get somehow past that uh, then let them have the crown of the king put something a bit more mundane in here maybe like a uh, magic bone Right, that it's magic. Let's give it a name so I know what it will do. Bone harpoon of uh, whale slaying would be the obvious choice. Anguish, why not? someone is hit by that it will break off it will shatter explosively and do an awful lot of damage and cause a bleed effect and they might use it if they have to fight against the leviathan 
in the finale. So next, the last ship. come like through this airlock and this will have of course two valves there will be air in here downwards and there would be some uniforms diving equipment and probably some kind of challenge so they can't go on right away hmm So the first door was just stuck. This door could be missing its ladder. It's a very small hurdle. They could potentially just jump down into the next section, but they'd have trouble getting back up. I imagine it is a bit like a nuclear sub, but I don't want to be that obvious or so give it a bit of a twist like put uh, the form of a triangle like a huge manta let come down here Um, that probably be two doors right here and right here. Right. This one be stuck. Well, let's pull a Skyrim one off here, closed from the other side, barred from the other side. And this one's a jar. I will naturally come into this chamber next. We'll have bulwarks here, and probably here, sectioning off the ship. Let's say this section here is flooded. Imagine up here would be a few crew quarters. I need 1d4 fines for this. Only 4 fines if they somehow manage to get into here.
And somewhere I need to put the entrance to the lower decks. So uh, let's put one right here, weld it shut. Yeah, this one leads downwards. Let's put another one uh, here and here and further come part. It's like the upper engine room. There'll probably be some here and here as well. I'll shut. Welded shot. Why is it welded shot? Well, something made this ship sink, and we put it, it in the lowest deck. Lower engine room. It's like no, the lower engine room. One half of the ship. I have ladders coming down here and there. And there will be huge, enormous engines. They'll probably be fusion powered. Let's put a radioactive warning sign here for good measure. Just have. Massively powerful engines here. Also flooded. These doors will be just closed. We've got like uh, officer quarters. Some more airlocks and here's the weapons bay. I'll give them like units of oxygen. Or if they uh, just go free diving in here, they'll have to make a check and risk getting damaged each time they're searching the flooded area to give them something of a time limit. Now let's put the default finds. And there. Let's draw some more engine here. More space over here. So what ever made the ship sink or maybe made the crew scuttle the ship is in the weapons bay. Um, let's put what they are sent to find here. And I call it the Arc Crystal. And it's like guarded by think of some kind of demon summoned there 
to counter the weapons of the ship like it was drawn to the uh, antimatter and the powerful weapons they had in this weapons bay. And everything considered, this was a bit of a small ship. If it uh, had sailed during the War of the Gods, this would have been considered a patrol ship. A boat. Still would have very powerful weapons. So it will be guarded by an end time. <laughs> Let's call it an anti-spectre. Draw a pair of angry eyes. The mouth. And just some kind of wobbling spectre. I'll come up with something. What the anti-spectre is and how it works eventually doesn't have to fill it out on this max on this map d4 finds in the crew quarters um let's say a laser pistol with one shot If he tests it out, <laughs> uh, it becomes a nice paperweight. Still would be worth a lot selling that to a collector. Silver pen. Broken tablet. Computer number four, mad security board. With a shock button. Six charges. Upper engine room. Um, a fusion welder. D6 uses. Nice will come in handy. Um, Emergency breathing apparatus. Two to six minutes. Heavy wrench. Chrome wrench. And according to my theme, number four is something dangerous, like a malfunctioning. Medical device. Let's call it a capsule. 
No engine room, number four. I know what this is. Nice <laughs> radioactive something. Radioactive slug. Let's give it like diamond teeth. Oh, players can rip that out, make a weapon from it, sell it. Very valuable. Three more mundane items you'd find in an engine room. Another toolbox. Uh, did I put tools somewhere before? Old toolbox. Make these fine tools. Oops, one more. <sighs> fine stainless tools. knife would be the opposite vibration knife wouldn't be too far-fetched a ceramic knife could be nice ceramic folding knife not very powerful but very useful and certainly um, valuable to a collector. can probably run the adventure. I've got the NPCs, their motivations, and then I can um, draw this expedition out over days, maybe weeks, and between the dives uh, they will repair equipment, they may have to uh, weather a storm, so let's put some weather in here weather each day only for sunny 
cloudy rain storm and if there is a storm they can't dive the seas will be too rough for their primitive diving equipment too risky but if they get away to breathe on the water that might be the time to have some alone time in the dungeon Six encounter and roll each day of diving. Can do. There's a lot to search, uh, yeah. And days on Thandor, 27 hours long. So I imagine they can do quite a bit of dives per day. Let's say four. Changing destination takes one dive. Yeah, and that is totally enough for me to run the adventure. Let's see how this goes. <laughs>